Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of AgriLife Today. I'm Blair Fannin. And I'm Kathleen Phillips. Well, this week we'll hear about a creative sausage workshop held recently in College Station, plus new research about using an old drug to treat infectious diseases. We'll also hear about new mesquite treatment using aerial applications and a new eco-physiologist joining the Uvalde Center. All this and more as we take a look at Texas agriculture and Texas A&M agri-life across the state. Making Good Sausage was the focus of Texans and out-of-state enthusiasts at a recent creative sausage workshop held at Texas A&M University. The workshop was open to both beginning and novice sausage makers. Well, right now in this lab, uh, the students have already gone through their uh, seasoning or their ingredient formulation for their different sausages. Uh, they've just gone through selection of the raw materials. Uh, they've gone through a grinding process, a mixing process, another regrinding process, and now they're actually back here uh, with the hand crank stuffers, actually stuffing their uh, sausage products into either natural or artificial casings. That once they do that, uh, we'll get ready for the uh, cooking process next. A new study reveals aerial treatment versus mechanical may be the most cost-effective alternative in certain brush management practices. We estimate that uh, forage production, livestock production can be reduced by as much as 60 or 70 percent because of brush invasion reduces forage production that much and it in, in particular it affects the best grasses that, that cattle use, the, the warm season mid grasses. About eight, eight or nine years ago we did some roller chopping treatments as part of another project. This whole area has been roller chopped, was roller chopped about eight years ago. So that mesquite looked like this stuff over here eight years ago and this is the regrowth since that roller chopping. Roller chopping basically just knocks it down doesn't kill anything, but then you get the, the sprouting. And so we designed these Sendero treatments uh, in patches to cover part of the old growth mesquite as well as the regrowth because we really, we don't really have much data on how Sendero or any of these herbicide products affects this real multi-stemmed regrowth. But uh, so, so you, you see that contrast here. Cotton producers are advised to stick to fundamentals when looking ahead to future prices. Dr. John Robinson said on the recent Ag Market Monthly Conference call that despite recent news headlines, the fundamentals of the supply and demand is a good compass for focusing future prices. Cotton farmers who decide to plant cotton need to think about forward pricing or hedging because price risk will continue to be to the downside. Meclizine, an over-the-counter drug used for decades to treat nausea and motion sickness, has the potential for new uses in the treatment of certain infectious diseases and cancer. Dr. Vishal Gohill, a Texas A&M AgriLife research biochemist, tells us more. This paper is about identifying a new target of a drug that has been used uh, in the market for decades. The chemical the name of the compound is meclizin. This compound was actually, um, it's a first generation antihistamine compound. It was synthesized actually in 1950s, so it's a very old compound. And uh, this compound was originally identified uh, in a screen, in a drug screen, designed to, to discover compounds or drugs that inhibit mitochondrial or that modulate mitochondrial respiration. As water supplies tighten, improved computer technologies could soon eliminate the waste and guesswork of irrigating winter vegetables in South Texas. Here's Texas A&M AgriLife research scientist, Dr. Juan Enciso, to tell us more. The, the objective of this project is to develop some irrigation methods and techniques to irrigate more efficiently, uh, to produce uh, more with better quality and use less water. Uh, for this reason, uh, we are also trying to set some plots here in the station. So we uh, do some demonstration trials uh, and then some field days to bring farmers to demonstrate these technologies. Fruit and vegetable growers have until November the 15th to comment on proposed Food Safety Modernization Act, federal regulations that will set standards for the growing, harvesting, packing, and holding of produce for human consumption. Comments can be made at www.regulations.gov. 
Dr. Zhijun Dong has been appointed crop ecophysiologist at the Texas A&M AgriLife Research and Extension Center in Uvalde. Dong's research will lead to better irrigation management strategies and more efficient crop production systems under water limited conditions as well as drought and heat stresses prevalent in the Winter Garden and other areas of Texas. Turning to Texas crop and weather, though much of the state remained in one stage of drought or another, rains during the last few weeks greatly alleviated the severity of the drought. About 87 percent of the state was still categorized as being abnormally dry to under exceptional drought on October 22nd, according to the Monitor. However, less than 1 percent was under exceptional drought conditions compared to more than 6 percent there more than three months ago. Well, that's a look at agriculture across the state of Texas and Texas A&M AgriLife. For this and more stories, please visit our website at today.agrilife.org.